Hi and welcome back to another Tech Minds video. So it appears you guys really liked my last video which features the Q900. Well, most of you that really understood what that radio is and what it isn't. I thought I'd make a quick follow up video to show you a couple of features that I didn't get time to show you in the last video. And I also answer a couple of questions that were raised. Now we've all seen CW decoding on various radios before, so it's no surprise to find it on the Q900. You can see that decoded CW is scrolled along the bottom line of the display. Of course, you need to have this enabled for this to work. What I've never seen before on a radio is the ability to transmit CW using a QWERTY keyboard. Yep, you can plug in a USB keyboard into the rear of this radio and then when on CW mode, you can type on a QWERTY keyboard and the radio will transmit what you typed, but as Morse code. Now this is me sending out a CQ call. Now I never use CW, it just doesn't really interest me, mainly because I'm just not very good at it. So after sending a CQ call using the Q900 and a QWERTY keyboard, I checked the Reverse Beacon website to see if my CW CQ call was decoded anywhere. Now to my surprise, it was actually picked up by a few stations here in the UK and a couple around Europe. So does that mean I can work CW without actually using a Morse key or having to write down decoded Morse messages or even learning Morse code fully while using this radio? I'll leave that up to you to decide. A couple of other FAQs ask questions whether the Q900 can transmit on 4 meter band, that's 70 megahertz, or the 1.25 meter band at 220 megahertz. Now, when testing on 4 meters and pressing the TX button, an out of band message was displayed on the screen. However, receiving 4 meters on all modes, obviously apart from DMR, was possible and it worked quite well. Transmitting on 1.25 meters, the Q900 did not show any out of band warning. However, there was no RF output from either of the two antenna ports. Now reception appeared to work, but here in the UK, the 1.25 meter band is where our broadcast digital services lay. So no real reception testing could really be performed here. AM airband reception was also asked about, so I hooked up my Q900 to my dual band collinear, which is up on my roof, and started to scan the airband. Now reception was actually quite good, and I was able to listen in to a few aircraft and tower transmissions. Now here's a real surprise. I knew that Q900 had an IQ audio output, so reception with HD SDR should be possible. But what I didn't know is that using a microphone attached to my computer, in fact, this very same microphone that I'm using to record this video, I was able to transmit using HD SDR and the Q900 transmitted my audio. So a nice little SDR radio that only needs a USB cable to work for transmit and receive. Thank you for 59 and thank you for short contact. 19. Oscar Mike 3, Charlie, whiskey, bye-bye. Uh, uh, a nice uh, 400 watts at the air which is uh, a Delta loop. So that's 40 metres of wire in a massive great vertical loop. And uh, the, um, uh, uh, it's actually terminating on the washing line uh, where there's a, a quarter wave of 75 ohm collapse. And now configuring HDSDR to work with the Q900 is quite simple. First, you need to set the sound card settings within HDSDR to take the audio input from the radio into the computer and then the decoded audio output to your computer's sound card. You'll then need to select a microphone and an audio output from the computer to the Q900. You'll also need to use OmniRig to set up an FT817, which will then provide the required CAT control to control the radio's frequency. You'll also need to select this OmniRig profile within HDSDR. Now the input selected is the Softrock SI570. The last thing I will cover is the power output observed on the Q900 that I have here. 
1.8 megs sees an output of around 16 watts, while 3.6 megs sees an output of around 12 watts. 5 MHz sees an output of around 19 watts, while 7 MHz sees an output around 17 watts. 10 megs sees an output of around 22 watts, and 14 megs was around 17 watts. 18 MHz, we saw an output of around 19 watts, while 21 MHz sees an output of around 18 watts. 24 MHz sees an output of around 21 watts, and 28 MHz sees an output of around 18 watts. This is also true up on the FM portion at 20. 9 megahertz as well. Now 50 megahertz, 6 meters, we saw an output of around 10 watts. Now jumping up to 145, the 2 meter band, we saw an output of around 17 watts, while 433 megahertz and all the way up sees an output of around 10 watts. Now as a bonus piece of footage, I've taken my Q900 apart to show you the quality of the build inside this Q900 version 3. In my opinion, this is extremely well built, well designed, and looks like if treated right, will last for many years to come. I know for one that I could never in my dreams design something like this, especially as it's so compact and has so many features. Now I know there's been a lot of bashing of this radio in the comments on the previous video, but what's nice is that there's actually more positive comments from people that really understand what this radio is. I know a lot of people will not touch radios other than from the big three manufacturers, which is fair enough. But are any of those big three making radios like this and at such a competitive price point? Now, I'm not stupid. I know that radios like this will have niggles that some people may find annoying. But like I mentioned in my last video, this is version three and the manufacturer is really, really trying to bring something unique to the market by listening to its customers and potential customers and then making the appropriate hardware and software changes. Now, if you haven't already, join the WhatsApp group where the manufacturer and authorized reseller is actively answering your questions. If you are interested in purchasing this product, if you use my links down below, you'll also get a discount code as well. You can obviously choose which modules you want at the time of ordering. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.